Happy Friday guys. Today we have the 2020 Lamborghini Urus. I know there's a vehicle that a lot of you guys have been asking out about for a while. So I'm they've fine. They've been asking it out. They've been asking it out? <laughs> You've been asking the car out. Yes, okay, <laughs> I just got that. That's Friday for you. Um, yes, yeah, so we're gonna get into this vehicle, but first I wanna say a couple things. One, the channel, we're at 99,000 subscribers right now. We're less than a thousand away from 100,000. And thank you guys so much for helping us get here. I'm really excited because I've got great content for you guys. Um, but yeah, 100,000, it's crazy. And I promised you, I was gonna tell you guys all about how I get these cars and how potentially you could do this too. So I will be starting to work on that video this coming week, it'll come out in like one or two weeks. So look forward to that. When we do hit 100,000, hopefully it's soon in the next day or two. So yes, thank you guys so much for that. Um, as usual, I'm going to answer first some questions from Instagram where I posed this. Uh, actually, I didn't didn't post it on Instagram this week, sorry. Uh, but if you want to follow me there, it's at miles per hour. I posted it on YouTube's community page. I'll answer some of those questions first. But I don't want to keep the folks who are on YouTube live who tune into this live video waiting too long. So I will dive back into their questions. And if you really want your question answered, you don't want to get to lot get it lost at all, then you can use the super chat feature to highlight your question. Just a suggestion. But that is that. Christina, of course, is manning the camera as usual, looking like Superwoman right now. I don't know. No, she you. looks great. Uh, what is our first question, Christina, so we can get into the Uras? Okay, and hello everyone for joining. Thank you. you guys, speak up. I said hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. Yeah, the mic's facing me. They I know. heard me. Okay. Okay. Is it noticeably different? to drive than other models using the VAG platform. All right, so the Volkswagen Auto Group platform underpinning the Urus, the Porsche Cayenne, the Audi Q8, RS Q8, um, and SQ8, the, and S7, and, oh, sorry, and SQ7. Uh, also underpinning Bentley's Bentayga. So yes, a lot of Volkswagen Auto Group vehicles are using this platform. And a very fair question, does it feel noticeably different than those vehicles? I don't wanna to go too deep into this because I am gonna have a review out on this vehicle uh, in the next few weeks, but I will say in loose terms that it is the most exciting to drive of those vehicles. The chassis feels a bit more eager. Let's put it that way, a bit more eager to drive enthusiastically. So you feel the excitement behind the wheel it does feel distinct enough, though you can still trace certain elements back to those vehicles I just mentioned that are also under that same VAG platform. Um, certain solid handling characteristics are gonna be uniform across the board with those vehicles. Okay. okay. All right, can it fit a human in the trunk? <laughs> I like this question. Uh, let's find out. So to open the trunk, there's a release here, or you can Where? get in the trunk. The release is here. And you don't actually have to hold it like I just did. You hold it for like a second and then it'll open up. <clears throat> I'm probably going to need to remove this cargo cover, which is actually very easy to do. Set it gently on the ground. And then see if I can fit in the trunk. Well, actually, I'm going to lower the air suspension to make it easier for me to get in. So only take a second, lowering, lowering. And what this is mostly doing, it's actually keeping the front air suspension the same elevation, but the rear air suspension it's lowering. So it creates kind of an angle here to make it much easier for you to load stuff or people in this case. So now I'm in the trunk. The biggest issue here is going to be, look how low this is. So your height in this trunk is not very high. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna need your help, Christina. Can you hit the button? Oh, gladly. Yeah. Oh. Goodbye. You hear that, guys? This is what I suffer with every day. I love, love my you. husband. <laughs> and that's it. So there's a release handle. Right Thanks for watching. Well, we can't hear you. Oh, okay. Very funny, Christina. What? Very funny. This is really fun for me, actually. Oh, oh good. <laughs> okay, what do I... I don't know how to get you out. What do I do? <laughs> Should I do it? Everyone's saying don't open. Oh, okay. All right. well, 
I'll just let him stop for a little. Thank you for the 99,000 subscribers. We're just gonna. That's it. That's it for the channel. Thanks, guys. She jokes. Maybe she's serious. I don't know. Okay, so can fit a human in the trunk. What is the next question? I like that one. Thank you. Uh, I didn't. Ah, I feel so bad. I didn't uh, say who asked those questions, but those were from the YouTube community page. Okay. I apologize if it was yours. Can you get one for two hundred thirty thousand uh, dollars? Well, so the starting price of the twenty twenty Urus is two hundred eleven thousand dollars. It jumps up to two hundred twenty. Three thousand for twenty-one, and the only changes for twenty-one, by the way, are it has some new paint colors. It gets some. What is this paint color? This is blue Elios. Not my favorite. I like the color. I don't think it looks good on the car. Oh, someone's learning how to drive a manual in the parking lot. That was funny. Um, it was like. <clears throat> oh gosh. That was the car. That was a great move. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't like this paint color on this car just personal preference. I'll get into that in the review. Uh, but yeah, so you get new paint colors, you get some active safety features, and 23 inch as opposed to 22 inch wheels is standard. That's all the changes for 21, and yet it's 10 grand higher in price. So 211 to start for this one. So I guess in theory you could buy for 230,000, but here's the deal. Every dealership is going to have some number of options on this car. This car right here has about $60,000 of options. It's $273,000 as tested. And I was looking at the options list and I was like, ah, that's, a, that's pretty reasonable. The two most expensive options on this car are the carbon fiber. They, I love this. They break it down carbon fiber lower and carbon fiber upper. That's how they name their packages. So that's all for the exterior. So I imagine the lower pieces in carbon fiber are one package. The upper pieces in carbon fiber are another package. But combined, they're like 24, 20, yeah, no, $22,000 just for those carbon fiber details. But the point, the moral of the story is any dealership is going to have some number of options. You're probably not going to get it out the door for 230. Okay. This is I'm me. scared for that manual transmission driver. Yeah, Love good. that they're trying to drive a manual. Uh, and I'm glad they're using a parking lot. Just stay away from me. Thank you. Okay. This is from me. What is this? That is the front-facing camera. I was slash... asking this, guys. What is that? Oh, okay. It looks terrible. Mm. The little, Honestly, the nub at the front here. It doesn't look good at all. What do you think it is? Uh, before I answer, what do you think it is? I feel like it, the car should transform. Like you hit that like button. Like if you push like it, that's a, but the... it doesn't do anything. It's just what if plastic. it did right now? What if I press this button and it just transformed? How cool would that be? Very cool, but it doesn't do that. Well, it can do it. <laughs> I'm in a weird mood, guys. Uh, what's, what is the next question, Christina? And the crowd was silent. <laughs> I don't care. So what is it, though? Just a camera? Oh, yeah. It's front-facing camera and the active safety features. Ooh, not a good look. Okay. Mm, okay. From Nick the King 911 does it have a V8 engine? Yes, it has a V8 engine. It's a 4-liter twin-turbo V8. Pop it open. Pop it open. Christina's in a very bossy mood today, guys. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. Tell me what to do. <laughs> eh, 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 I did this earlier. There it is. Okay. Four liter twin turbo V8 it makes 641 horsepower and 500 and no, and 627 pound feet of torque. It escaped me for just a minute. Connected to an eight speed dual clutch automatic gearbox, sending power to all four wheels. Uh, what do you guys think of the engine cover on this? I'm not necessarily impressed. It, uh, I, you know, I like the Lamborghini. You know, the issue is that you look at a Lamborghini engine and they're not gonna have an engine cover. Uh, but this, this one does have an engine cover and it doesn't look quite as exciting, I would say, as the other Lamborghini non-engine covers that you're gonna have. They're, they're just gonna have it on the, on the manifold. They're just gonna have, um, and Lamborghini printed out on uh, the Huracan and the Aventador and stuff. But here we've got an engine cover. We do have the firing order of the cylinders here on this little plaque right here. But that's that's about it. But that's the V8 engine. You asked if it's got a V8. It does have a V8. Yes. Okay. How's this compared to a Trackhawk from BMA? 
That's an interesting question. Uh, you know, same realm, super SUVs. Trackhawk makes more power, 707. Very but different price tags, right? Very different price tags. Yeah, Trackhawk like, starts at 80 something, 86, I think. <clears throat> and this starts at 211. How does it compare? Well, the Trackhawk kind of feels wrong in like all the right ways. Like it feels like you shouldn't, it's, it's a muscle car in an SUV and it feels like you shouldn't be able to do that. And that's, I think, part of its charm and appeal. Um, it feels raucous, it feels crazy. This feels exciting, uh, but from like a slightly more refined, not slightly, a much more refined uh, form. So like it manages the chaos much, much better, turns, it in, turns chaos into handling precision and stupid fast acceleration and really high top speed. It's the fastest SUV in the world tied with the Bentega speed and uh, the RSQ8. So um, I think this manages the chaos in a much more noticeable way, whereas the Trackhawk just feels like all engine all the time. Yeah, there you go. Didn't know what I was gonna say when I started that, but I think I finished it up just fine. All right, from Cade, if you have driven the RSQ8, what is the differences that you notice between it and the Urus? And is the Urus worth the extra money in your opinion? It's a great question. I'm gonna have to answer that in two weeks because I haven't driven the RSQ8. I've driven the SQ8, but I've dri I will drive the RSQ8 in two weeks. So I will be able to answer that, but in reverse order. I'll mostly be thinking, oh, I remember the Urus how does this compare to the RSQ8? Um, but I don't have the RSQ8 frame of reference. From what I've heard from my friends who are also journalists who have driven the RSQ8, I mean, what's the point? I'm, I'm gonna give you my opinion. I'm not gonna tell you what they think. So I have not driven the RSQ8 yet. Uh, what I expect is that the RSQ8 is not going to sound like this, even though it's using the same engine. The Lamborghini tuning of the exhaust system is pretty fun. It makes a great noise and the, um, I, I just feel like the, the platform is very eager. And that's, uh, again, you, we asked the question earlier about the other VAG uh, vehicles using the same platform. I, I mentioned the RSQ8 among those. Again, I haven't driven the RSQ8 yet. I have driven the Cayenne Turbo. I haven't driven, I have driven the Bentley Bentayga Speed. This is much more eager than those. Hopefully it's going to be more eager than the RSQ8 to justify the additional price, significant price bump. It's like a hundred and, uh, just a hundred. I think it's a hundred thousand straight up more expensive than the RSQ8. From VW Touareg, show me the brake. Ah, that's fun. The brakes, the brakes are actually my favorite thing about this car. Uh, not only are they the largest, because this, this is just a, a statistic, right? They are the largest brakes fitted to a production vehicle. Uh, but you say that, but it's when you actually see them that you're like, good heavens, that's a set of brakes. The rotors are 17.3 inches in diameter, the, and they're carbon ceramics as standard. The calipers, look at the size of these calipers. It's basically my forearm, from my elbow to the tips of my fingers. That's the uh, rotors in, uh, in diameter. But like 10 piston carbon ceramic brakes. I know the vehicle weighs over 5,000 pounds, but that's just, that feels like we're just doing a, we're, we're showing off a little bit. And I'll talk more about how the brakes actually work in my review, but uh, how they perform. But that's just, it's hilarious to me, the size of those brakes. Bigger is better. What is our next question, Christina? Uh, I'm not sure what this means, maybe <clears throat> you do. VW to a reg again, is that single clutch? Single clutch? Oh, single clutch, he's probably asking. No, it is a dual clutch transmission. Okay. Not a single clutch. It's not it's like the Aventador clutch. where it's like pff, kicks you back with every gear change. Another okay. question. Uh, We've got a lot of different languages going on. Sorry, guys. I don't speak Portuguese, but I do speak Spanish. Yeah. How many horses? Someone's asking about the horsepower. 641. From Bruno. Okay, 641. Mm -hmm. Just like the current Huracan Evo. Evo. Why did I say Evo? That was weird. I don't know why that came out of my mouth. All right, from Chris, does the C8 feel slow? Huh. Uh, the Corvette, when I drove that? Oh. No. 
No, it does not feel slow. Uh, maybe they meant, does the V8 in this feel? I, I, I don't know why they'd be asking about the Corvette when we're talking about the Urus, but maybe they are talking about the Corvette. The Corvette does not feel slow, no. And the V8 in this doesn't feel slow. I'll answer whatever question you, you're asking. All right, from Master Genie, 54. You want to see the interior, guys? Yeah. Would yeah. you get the Urus or an Audi Q8 RS? Just Audi RS Q8? I, I don't know yet because I haven't driven the RS Q8. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you just answered that one. Would, uh, you know, I, I'm going to have to pull myself out of this equation because I don't have the money for either of the vehicles. But um, this is going to have to be pretty sensational to justify the additional $100,000 over the RS Q8. It does make 50 more horsepower, 591 for the RS Q8. But is that worth $100,000? Is the styling up to your liking? Um, all those questions, I'll have to answer that after I've driven the RSQ8, but for now, it's a pretty freaking sensational SUV. Mm -hmm. This is the interior, and, oh, I don't want to put the cargo covers on my in the front. Just show up the interior and ask any questions for right now. How different does it feel from a regular Huracan? From a Huracan? Uh, Boy, that is a Pandora's box of a question. How different does it feel from a Huracan? I don't know if they can hear you. Extremely different from a Huracan because this weighs almost twice as much. Uh, that That's going to make the difference. In terms of aesthetics and emotion, uh, I'm still going to say that the NAV10 of the Huracan is more exciting. I'm going to say the fact that the steering wheel paddles, or sorry, the paddles are on the column and huge on the Huracan versus on the steering wheel and not that big on the Urus don't help for the emotion factor. Um, this thing is awesome. The gear selector and the, um, the start stop and the ego controls, ego means individual, uh, all those controls, that's pretty freaking sweet. It's fun to operate that. It's, it's just, you feel like a kid like pulling levers and stuff. It feels like you're in a fighter jet. Yeah, so that's all fun. Okay. How much slower does it feel compared to a regular rear wheel drive Huracan? How much slower does it feel? Uh, so, okay, like the Lamborghini quotes the zero to 60 time at 3.6 seconds. Not a chance. This is, this is definitely faster than 3.6 seconds to 60. It feels about it feels noticeably, though not a lot, slower than a Huracan in zero to 60. It's again, it's just that weight. I think when it comes down to it, a rear wheel drive Huracan, yes, it's only got the rear wheels with the traction there, but it's still a featherweight by comparison to this big old SUV. So getting something in motion like that, when it weighs this much, over 5,000 pounds, is, it's a lot to ask. So the fact that this, I think the fastest anyone saw on this was like three seconds, maybe even just below that to 60, but I get, I bet you can get a Huracan to 60 in like 2.8 faster, 2.7, 2.8. I think you should start it up. Okay. We'll start, oh yeah. Have we not started up yet? No. That was Strada. This is Sport. This is Corsa. So it just allows much more exhaust noise. Does it sound better than a V10 Huracan? No. Sound pretty darn good for an SUV though. Okay, what is our next question? Getting to it. Okay. Filtering through. Again, you want your question to, to percolate to the top, you can use Super Chat. Otherwise, we may have to jump back into some of the uh, questions from Okay, Master YouTube. Genie, Lamborghini Urus or G-Wagon? Ah, that's a fun one. Uh, now, that's a great question as a sort of like, like baller move, like I made it kind of play. And 
It's hard because here in Orange County, there are a lot of G-Wagons. There are more than there are Uruses. So when you see an Urus, you kind of like, you really take notice. And most people have them in like bright yellow and stuff. I think it actually looks great in black or white with black wheels. But uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Urus because surprisingly the ride quality in this is fantastic. You can take it off road with the off road package that this doesn't have. Uh, it's far more exciting on a daily basis. Practicality is pretty similar to the G-Wagon. G-Wagon's gonna have a taller cargo area, but the, the rear leg room in this is sensational. I had a lot of rear leg room in this. Uh, yeah, cargo's gonna be a little better in the G-Wagon, okay. But I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say Urus. But it was a good question, I like that. All right, from Chris, does the interior feel like a Huracan or more luxury? That's a good question. Let's just get in it. Uh, I, yeah, let's get in it. But I think it, I, I'm going to say it feels a bit more German luxury than He said German luxury. I'll tell you why. Uh, first of all, <laughs> so the, this is a press vehicle that has 8,000 miles on it. And this was a leather and suede steering wheel. Oh. And look how much it's pilled. Just in 8,000 miles, the, the pilling that has happened on the Alcantara is pretty pronounced. So I don't know if this would be the best steering wheel if you're gonna drive this vehicle a fair amount. Just a FYI. Uh, the interior, you know, the steering wheel says Huracan. This thing says Lamborghini Huracan. Uh, in terms of excitement, but the rest of the stuff, the fit and finish, the details feel like German luxury, which is not a bad thing. I don't mind that you've got the technology out of an Audi and some switchier things out of an Audi because they're gonna last and they're really well built. So I don't actually mind that. Yeah, this whole, the MMI infotainment Lamborghini puts a new skin on certain things, uh, like the fact that there are geometric shapes around each of these icons here. But, uh, but for the most part, you know, it's, it's gonna be Audi tech uh, with some flourishes from Lamborghini. Okay, right. hey, from Ukasha. Hey, I just started watching your like two weeks ago and is the best channel. Oh. I got a question. Thanks, How much does it cost if it have, if he gets any options with it? Well, so this one with options, so starting price is 211, 211,000. This one with options is 273. The options list is extensive. So you can spend an extra $100,000 just in options for this vehicle if you're not careful. Um, but this one is almost conservative with just 60,000 in options for it. We're in sport mode right now, by the way. I love that the, uh, their, their version of the drive mode selector is called Anima. Ferrari has their Manitino, Lamborghini has their Anima, and Ego is the individual. Okay. Do you rent or buy these vehicles from Rashad's TV? Neither. Neither. I will tell you exactly how I get these vehicles in a special video in very soon because we're about to hit 100,000 subscribers. Two weeks. About two weeks. I told you when we hit 100,000, I would tell you how I get these cars. Uh, short story, I'm a journalist. I get these cars to review. Okay, I'm going to go into manual mode and punch it. nice noise right that was sport this is Corsa so a little louder okay from Joel J this versus the Aventador SVJ in terms of the Lamborghini family oh man I mean if you want a pure Lamborghini experience it doesn't get better than the Aventador SVJ like that was just that was excitement on four wheels. That's what that car was for me. So that that's not a contest for me. This is great if you want like some Lamborghini, traces of Lamborghini fun in an SUV form factor. That's this. This is not the purebred Lamborghini excitement that you get from an Aventador SVJ. My thought. I think this is the same question. Do you like the Huracan rear wheel drive more? It's it's not even in the same class of vehicle. It's hard yeah. to answer that question. Um, 
A better question would be, do I like the Huracan better than the McLaren 720S? Do I like it better than the Ferrari F8? Uh, this isn't really a comparison with the Huracan. Um, within the Lamborghini family, I'm gonna say I'm gonna choose the Huracan. Just because if I want a Lamborghini supercar, I'm gonna go get myself a Huracan. We can do launch control. To do that, we go into Corsa. We press the ESC button once. Put our foot on the brake. Make sure the road is clear ahead. Yes, it is. Wait till the light goes green. Pin the throttle. Let go. Whoa. Yeah, it, it goes off the line. It, it rears back and it goes. Sorry, you keep, someone keeps asking about horsepower, but I think we already mentioned it. We did. 641. 641. Okay. I'm going to go back up. What do we think of the noise from within the cabin? What you can hear. What do you think of it? It doesn't sound like, from what I've heard of the Audi RS Q8, it doesn't sound like the Bentega Speed, certainly. I mean, that one's a W12, but... Uh, it doesn't sound like the RSQ8's tuning of the twin turbo V8 in that car. How easy is it to use the climate control touch screen? Very. Very easy to use. It's got haptic feedback, so there is a tactile response when you hit one of these buttons. So you know, even without looking at it, that it, uh, it has picked up what you've asked it to do. Does this have the same engine as the Audi RS Q8? It does, with different tuning. Okay, how do you launch? We just did it. I'm probably gonna do it again right now. Oh. Just for fun. Would you rather buy an Urus or a Bentayga? Launching. Launching stuff. I'd rather buy an Urus or a Bentega. Uh, that's not gonna happen. For that's us. oh no, I know it's not gonna happen for <laughs> us, but that's that's an interesting question. The Bentega is just it's so luxurious, it's so comfortable, and it has smooth, smooth power. I don't particularly gravitate towards this super upper echelon of high, high performance SUV, like this, the X5M competition, the uh, Mercedes AMG GLE 63S. I don't really gravitate towards these vehicles necessarily. I like the effortless power of the W12 powered Bentega Speed a bit more, though this is pretty fun. I would, you know, I would just have a sports car and I would have the Bentega Speed. That's a supercar and a Bentega Speed. That, that would be me, if I could afford either of them, which I can't, but in this imagination land that we're talking about, that, that would be my choice. Nice. Oh, some viewers are getting annoyed because there's a lot of spamming going on. Um, yeah, if you send your question, you don't have to repeat it multiple times. <laughs> I will get to it. Yeah. That's, yeah. I'm Not a teacher. <laughs> I will get to your question. <laughs> Can you rev it? We already did. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So you're going to have to go back and watch the beginning. Yep. Okay. Oh, start-stop system. Is That's there a, a soft limiter from King's Fortnite? No, it'll actually let me it let me rev out all the way to 7,000 hmm. when I was sitting there revving it. Okay, what's the 0 to 60 time? We talked about that, but Yeah, they, they quote 3.6, but people have seen faster. 3.2, 3.1 to 3.2 It's kind of like what people are seeing. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not going to answer ask questions that are about BMW or other things right now because okay. there's a lot of questions about the Urus. Okay. And again, you can highlight your question in Super Chat. Okay. You go POV on Lamborghini, run, go with no. Uh, we are going to do, he's I, going I will, to do a POV. I will do a POV of this. Don't you worry. I'll do a POV night drive, POV day drive. I'll also do a POV Canyon drive for maximum fun. This 
I don't know if this relates. Do you like RDBLA VIX Urus? What's that? What's that? Uh, I imagine that's a person's Urus. No, I don't know who that is. Um, so I can't say whether I like it or not. Okay, let's do this one. Jesse, can an Urus be a daily driver? Hmm, it's a good question. Very much so, yes. It is, the ride quality is surprisingly good in Strata. The biggest issue is gonna be that it gets 14 miles per gallon combined MPG. And that's not an issue if you can afford the gas. If you can buy this car, you can afford the gas. It's more that you're gonna to have to go to the gas station more than seems necessary. It's just like taking time out of your day to go to the gas station. That's the, that's the bigger issue I have. But it could be a daily driver. It has the practicality. Um, I didn't hop in the back seats. I really should have. So maybe I'll find a place to stop and hop in the back seats just to show you. But I have plenty of leg room as a six foot tall adult. There's actually a parking lot right here. Oh, the most crowded one. Oh. No, I'm like, all right, right here. Okay. Lamborghini Urus or BMW X6M? Mm. I'm gonna say, that's a good question. Oh wait, X6M? Yeah, X6M is not, not interesting to me. I don't like how the X6M looks personally. Not a fan of the looks of the X6M. Urus or DBX? Ah, that's that's going to be an interesting question. I haven't oh, driven gosh. the DBX yet. I'm uh, hoping to get into one next month, so in November. November or December, planning to get into the DBX. And then I will have better thoughts for you. I've heard very good things about the DBX. Let's put it that way. So I just want to show you Six feet tall, that's my driving position. I have headroom, not a lot of it, but I've got a long torso. I got half, half an inch of headroom. My head's not on the roof, that's important. And the seats can recline a little bit too. So there we go. So I can lounge back up here a bit more. The foot pockets under the seats are remarkably good. There's plenty of space for me to slide my feet under here. You may have to hop back yep. here, Christina. So look at this so easy for me to slide my feet under here which reduces the knee angle makes me really feel like i'm lounging my seat is in the recline position like you don't need anything more than this six foot tall adult you don't need anything more than this i have plenty of space back here quad zone climate control is standard so each of these rear passengers me and this person can have our own climate yes it has a fifth seat would i put a full-size adult back here probably not because the tunnel hump the transmission hump is pretty tall and when I sit in the middle I can't my head doesn't clear my head's on the roof so it's a four passenger and I would probably choose the four seater configuration of this car just personally then again that would cut into no I don't think it would sacrifice cargo at all so I would choose the four seater that might that might wrap it up honk test please honk test by okay Peter Pham. Uh, I will be putting that in the POV and the walk around by the way but I'll do a honk here why not me up because yes they sound different um, but unless it sounds really like whiny or really like robust of a honk on the horn they they all just kind of sound the same to me I think that is going to do it for us guys mm -hmm. for this live Q&A on Friday uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in from wherever you are, all over the world it seems, and that's wonderful. I will have POV Day Drive, POV Night Drive, POV Canyon Drive, walk around, and a review for the Lamborghini Urus up soon. Just be a little patient, it might be a couple weeks. And between now and then, we will have that video, that special 100,000 subscriber video telling you how I do this job, how I get access to these cars. So many of you ask that question all the time. I don't know why that thing was concerned there. And uh, yeah, so look forward to that. But thank you guys so much for being part of the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And uh, look forward to more great content right now. All right, and lots of questions we didn't get to. So what do you want to say? Just comment them and I read all your questions. I will answer them. 
And, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, guys. See you. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining.